All right, let's return to our main text. Variance. So, in other words, there's something that varies. There's something that's not united. Okay, so this is very important to understand. You know what the goal of San Jose Bible Baptist Church is? Is to be in unity. The church is supposed to be united. Now, here's the thing. I know brother, sister, so-and-so may have a problem. Blah, 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 blah. And then you can't put up with them. They can't put up with you. Blah, 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 blah. But that is a work of the flesh. To sit at the back row and, and your enemy, which is your brother and sister to begin with, sitting at the front row, that is not right with God. We are all supposed to be united. Well, the brother and sister has a problem. So did Judas Iscariot, and how many times did he have to sit next to Jesus, huh? You got to realize this. You know what the church is? The church is not, if you're trying to find a problem in the brother and sister rather than finding something good, that shows where your heart is looking at. That is not right with God. You know what your heart and attitude should be? Trying to find something good and then find something you can agree upon, and that's how you're going to get along with the brother and sister. You know why people leave the church? They always try to find a problem with whatever they didn't like in the preaching, the teaching, or how the church was set up, or what brother and sister so-and-so said to them. And yeah, brother and sister so-and-so may even sin against you too. That will happen in Bible-believing churches, but it is never right that you have variance. It's supposed to be united. Do you know how many times that this pastor was treated wrongly or misunderstood or they talked behind my back? And I don't, don't think your pastor is dumb, all right? I know there are some things that I don't catch on, but I ain't dumb either. There are some things I've caught from certain members talking behind my back, but you know what? I just smile at them and say, hey, brother, hey, sister, like that. Why? Because that's what a church should be. That's why we can maintain a pleasant attitude. What if I came in with a bad attitude, huh, in church? Do you think you're going to enjoy a church service? No. I had to put that aside because that is a work of the flesh. I don't care how right you feel. You may be right in an argument, but here's something. That is a fleshy thing. That is a fleshy thing to maintain your own self-righteous ego. It doesn't matter how right you think you are. That is of, a, of the flesh. That is not right. You've got to be united. Okay. I'm preaching here. Next one of verse 20. Emulations. Okay, emulations is referring to jealousy right here. So there are brothers and sisters in Christ who are jealous one another. And guess what? This is really bad. I'm going to get on preachers now. This is really bad with preachers. Especially when God uses a preacher more than you, you get all jealous. And because God's hand is in that preacher that is not on you, you think you accuse that preacher of compromising. You accuse that preacher, you try to find something wrong with the preacher. Try to find some defect in his life and character. Why? Because your ministry is not as blessed as he is. And you know what your ministry is built upon? Your ministry, especially if you're an onliner, you're a sad, sad little man, little woman. But you onliners especially, what you want to do is pick on a channel that's bigger than you, and then you want to act like the right preacher. You're the only one that's right in this Laodicean apostasy. Everybody's wrong because no one is as smart as you. And then you try to find anything wrong with people out there. You are full of the flesh, and it shows. It shows on the Internet. Listen, man, if somebody... It, let me also say this. If some brother and sister in Christ that you don't like has it better than you, you know what you need to do? It is a sin to be jealous of that person. Amen. That hurts. Let me repeat it again because it hurts your flesh. It is a sin when you get jealous of the brother and sister that you don't like who has it better than you. Like Dr. Uckman once said, Dr. Uckman once said that Arlen and Becca Horton, you know, they have a... Uh, honorary doctorate, so Dr. Horton, and then he says, rejoice, I rejoice with Dr. Horton, you know, like that. Now, of course, he was joking like that, and Arlen and Becca Horton were the split from his ministry and church. They're the ones that started PCC and Becca Academy. They were the ones who split off from Ruckman. They're the ones that caused the problem. That must have hurt Dr. Ruckman's ministry greatly, but what did he do? He has no emulation toward that. In fact, he even sent his SIDS his kids and his members attend that school. 
See, that shows a right heart, a right attitude. You know why you should rejoice that the brother and sister has it well? The reason why is, is because they're your family. Wouldn't you do that with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, if something good happened to them, someone you loved? Even if they are not as righteous living as you, don't you get happy when something good happens to them? Why? Because you really believe they are part of your flesh and blood. You really love them. And that exposes that you don't really love your brother and sister then when you don't rejoice when something good happens to them. Because you don't think that they are really my brother and sister. They are someone that I truly love. All right, wrath. Okay, so wrath is anger. So that will really expose within conflict in the ministry, conflict in street preaching. You know how your fleshy attitude will be exposed, the work of the flesh will be showed, when God will deliberately set something inside the church that he knows will tick you off, deliberately set something out on the streets while you're preaching, he knows will tick you off, and that will be the testing point that Satan will use to see how your tone of voice will be when you talk to the person. Your attitude and your treatment of the person. That should be repented of, wrath. Families, uh, we always go through fights, right? There's a lot of wrath in families. And you've got to realize this, that is not right with God. You know what usually the number one thing with family fighting is? You fight in a family because you want to prove you're right, they're wrong. That's what fighting is. Look, if, you argue, if you're going to try to argue something that is right in the eyes of God, you shouldn't feel pressured or concerned if the person doesn't listen to you and argue back against you. If you know you're in the right in your Holy Spirit field, you're going to keep your composure and be firm when you keep talking to the person. If you're really on the right, you will maintain your composure and maintain that firmness if you're in the right. And if you're really in the right, you're going to admit your wrongdoing and say, yeah, I was wrong right here, so I admit it, I'm sorry, but we got to maintain this way. All right, so... Man, I'm spending a lot of time here preaching. Let's talk about, so we covered wrath concerning anger. Strife. Strife is fighting. So that can apply to wrath right there. What are you doing when you're fighting each other? Trying to prove that you're right and they're wrong? When you do that, you will then live in jealousy, anger, and all the other sins against the brother and sister. It starts with strife. When you get strife right, everything else will start to come out right. Next one, seditions, heresies. Okay, so what is seditions and what are heresies? Seditions is referring to off doctrine, really weird, strange doctrine out there. Heresies is referring to heresy, wrong doctrine. So these two are self-explanatory right there. These are a work of the flesh to teach a doctrine that if you, for, here's a good example of being fleshy, to teach a doctrine that if you, have homosexual feelings, it's impossible for you to get saved. You'll never get saved. You're a damnable reprobate. You can never get saved again. That is heresy. And what, why do you teach that? Because you're fleshy. Because who wouldn't get fleshy toward a bunch of homos out there who scream at you Christians, who try to crucify you Christians, make us look evil, and parade their stupid perversion outside? Who wouldn't get fleshy upset and want to teach a doctrine that you're forever damned? I'm not going to see you in heaven. I wish I won't see you in heaven. I'm glad you're dead and you're killed. That is a fleshy yeah. work of the flesh and that is wickedness. Because you know what? You know what you share in common with the sodomites? I don't share anything in common. No, there is something you share in common with them. You share the same hatred and wickedness like they do toward another person. So that's why, why does your pastor, well, you know, uh, why can't we all get along, preachers? Pastor Kim, you know, what's the big deal about post-trib rapture, pre-trib rapture? What's the big deal with dispensationalism? What's the big deal about different Bibles? And you, King James, it's close to the King James. Why do you make a big deal about that one? Pastor Kim, why do you teach this kind of weird, controversial stuff, you know? You talk about weird things about aliens and then blue bloods and then 
all this kind of weird stuff. I mean, it's crazy, Pastor, what you talk about. Why do you talk about that kind of stuff? You know, Cain and Abel were twins. And you know why? Because the reason why is, is because if you truly love God's book, Jesus said, if you will love me, you will love my doctrines. So I am not going to shy away from anything that is true from the word of God. Just because the doctrine may be so controversial, I am not going to lie to you about it. Amen. Then I'm a work of the flesh and I'm teaching heresy. You know how easy it is to keep my mouth shut and to take down the videos that are really controversial? I only did probably two, maybe. I only did that because I'm thinking about what edifies the people out there. But no matter how many people complain, I don't care. Unless it doesn't edify the people, and then I'll go, okay, so I'll take it down. But the thing is this, is that I don't shy away from this kind of stuff. And they point me out to be a heretic or somebody stupid, controversial. Hey, man, whatever. Because if I taught, believe the way you believed and taught the way you believe, then I am teaching sedition and heresy. It's not sedition and heresy when I teach something controversial from the Bible. It's a heresy if I deny the controversial doctrine from the Bible. Now, you pray and ponder on that for a while. That's why, I, that's why I kick heresy out there, and I'll even kick heretics out there, because it's important. All right, verse 21, envying. So we should not envy one another. That's a, that matches up with emulations almost. Murders. All right, so I, I trust that we don't have a murderer in here, so we can skip that one, right? But you know what the book of John says? He that hateth his brother is a murderer. So if there's some brother or sister in Christ that you hate, then you better repent and get that right with God. <coughs> Let's keep reading here. Drunkenness. So getting drunk is a sin. Oh, it's okay. Drunkenness is a sin, but moderate drinking is okay. Don't use that line on me. How often did moderate drinking not get you drunk then? Don't use that line on me. So it shows you right here, moderate drinking did get you drunk before, didn't it? Don't use that line on me. All right, so drunkenness is a sin, so stay away from moderate drinking then. Revelings. So revelings is like that kind of, uh, like Mardi Gras. That's the idea. So going out, reveling, having a great time, but, you know, doing it in foolishness and in wickedness and in sin. So yes... Whether you believe it or not, uh, binge drinking is a sin, and uh, orgies is a sin, orgies is a sin, and all this kind of stuff, having revelings is a sin, is a sin. Gambling is a sin. Partying is a sin. Okay. Let's keep reading verse 21. Of the wit, uh, and such like. So notice right here, Paul is saying anything that is similar to all these sins at verses 19 through 21. All things are such like. These are the works of the flesh. Let's keep reading. Of the which I tell you before, so Paul told you about this before, as I have also told you in time past, Paul said, I told you, I told you about this even a long time ago. So that should be the job of every preacher. Now, how often have you heard preachers doing this in their pulpits every Sunday? Or is it usually motivational, inspirational speeches? You know how often sin should be preached against? Very often that Paul would say twice, I've told you this before, twice. All right, let's keep reading. That they which do such things, so if you commit these sins, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So this is used by lordship salvation. So again, lordship salvation, what that is, is that they teach that unless you surrender all your sins to Jesus or repent of all your sins or live a significantly clean Christian life, then you must not be saved. So the idea is this. That's a heresy. Lordship salvation is utter heresy. But they will use that passage that if you keep yielding to this lust of the flesh, then you are not going to heaven. No, is that what the verse says, that you're not going to the kingdom of God? Or did it say not inherit? Not inherit. That's an important verse. Another verse they'll use is 1 Corinthians 6. They're going to use that too. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10. Now I'm going to wrap it up right here. 
My time is up, so I've got to wrap it up right here. But notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10, see all these different sins that these people are committing? So if you commit these sins, then you cannot go to heaven. This is quite, this is a passage lordship salvation will often use, so I want you to remember that. What you can argue to them is this, is that the verse never said you lose salvation, you can't go to heaven. It says you lose your what? Inheritance. So you will go to heaven, but my goodness, friend, you're not going to get your gold, your silver, your precious stones, cities to rule, and you're not going to get your inheritance. So what are you going to do up in heaven? You can go up to heaven, but here you are with nothing to rule. But then you see all these brothers and sisters in Christ having so many different cities to rule and inheritance of all things, which is all the universe. So they have all kinds of stuff that our mind can only imagine. And then you would go, man, if I knew that, then I would have worked that hard uh, to get that reward in heaven. No, God wants you to walk by faith, not by sight. So he wants you to trust him that what he will reward you is better than what you're doing right now. You gained your reward on this earth. So God's not going to give you your reward in heaven. So that's why focus on your reward up there, not down here. How often are you wasting your time, your life right now, just to buy a nice little house for yourself? Just to get a six-digit income, which is nothing but paper green bills. What are you wasting your life on when you got so much more up there?